Hello there, I'm the Black Shadow and welcome to this full tutorial video for uh, setting up Resident Evil Outbreak, both files 1 and 2, uh, both for local and online play for the PlayStation 2 emulator PCSX2. Although both uh, Outbreak files 1 and 2 have been out for the best part of 20 years now, uh, the game's popularity does certainly continue to exist and uh, with the fact that you've got Project Resistance, uh, which is due to come out very, very soon, uh, and the beta has just been finished, um, and which is almost a sort of homage to to, uh, outbreak it seems only good an idea that i go ahead and get this uh, tutorial up and running because tutorials are a bit light on the ground and setting this up correctly um some of them are very out of date as well um so some of the information they give you is no longer relevant because the way that uh, the setup has changed over the course of time uh this will be done from the ground up so straight from the point of uh, downloading going through the whole setup making sure the game works uh collecting to online going through the setup for that if required and then if you're also interested I will also be going over how to uh, make a hard drive install this game, uh, which can be done in order to um, quicken your load times, which also counts for online mode, which is really, really nice. So the first thing that we need to get hold of um, is everything we're going to need for the actual um, process that we're going to be doing. Uh, there are a series of links below um, in the video description, which will be all the stuff uh, that we'll be using for today. And the first one of those will be for PCSX2 itself, the actual um, emulator program. So we'll head up to the actual main site, PCSX2.net. Uh, we want to go to download. And uh, whichever operating system you're working on, there is a specific one here. I'm running on Windows personally. So I will go on to that and we're going to go ahead and download 1.4.0, which is totally fine. And you can go ahead and use this. Uh, there are some like development versions, I believe, at the moment for 1.5, which are somewhere around. Um, but you shouldn't particularly need to worry about that. So we're just going to go ahead and download this. There we go. Uh, your PC and laptop, any modern day computer should be more than capable of running uh, these programs now. But it is advised if you're unsure, uh, also on the PCSX2 site, uh, probably in getting started, uh, there is a small guide of sort of a rough specs idea for what you want to expect. Um, as some of the things that is done, you know, ultimately you're emulating, you know, a, a physical console, and that can be quite uh, intensive on your computer in some respects. So do do please check that out if you're unsure. So, uh, first off, we've got the uh, the actual emulator. The next thing you're going to need to go ahead and do, uh, especially if you want to play this game online, as well as access some of the links below, uh, is go ahead to obsrv.org. Uh, now, uh, this is a site which is basically run um, by all the guys that actually make online play currently possible. Uh, Capcom shut down the servers for RE Outbreak many, many years back. And the ones that are currently live are Fan Run, um, which is an amazing feat. Uh, this has been what is going on for many years now. Uh, and the lot here are a fantastic bunch and deserve all the support that they can physically get. Uh, you'll need to make sure that you have got an account here. Uh, if you don't, go ahead and make one. It's very quick and simple um, and will make your life Life significantly easier in doing so and also have a look around there's plenty of cool stuff going on here with some other tutorials and stuff as well so that's always good stuff so uh we've got our computer um we've got the emulator uh the next thing we're going to talk about is um the actual what the the uh, emulator will require so the first topic that we'll have to talk to which will be followed by the second one very quickly is regarding the comp the emulator's bios now if you don't know what that is Think of it like the operating source for your computer. It's the core program, effectively, that makes everything happen. And without it, nothing would work. Um, now, uh, first things first, we said that both the BIOS and the copy of your game uh, need to be from the same region. Uh, if you intend to play this game online, it must be the Japanese version. It's the only version that really works in any sense. Um, don't worry if you can't speak Japanese. We'll sort that, that later. I cannot give you guys uh, links or copies of either any a working BIOS or of the version of the game. I am not allowed to do so. If there are questions um, in the comments asking me about that, they will be deleted on the spot. So please don't bother asking. But uh, if you have the actual physical console in the game, uh, the correct type that is at least, you can uh, get uh, the programs directly from those and use them. And the internet is a wonderful place, is all I'll say in regards to that as well. Um, so be sure to check out that. There's guides on here as well about how to actually get hold of that as well so uh that copies the the bios as well as the um the copy of the game which is an iso uh if you're going to be hold on a second if i'm going to play the japanese version i can't speak japanese i don't know what anything says 
That's a good point. This is why this thread exists, uh, and this patch is here, uh, a translation patch for Resident Evil Outbreak, uh, which you can use for files 1 and 2. They must be clean copies of the Japanese um, clean disk, however, uh, to, in order to make this work. There's a full uh, description and uh, a small tutorial of how to run this part of the process. I don't need to do that at this point. I've already got this um, a copy of uh, the Japanese game that's translated, but the link is there below should you need to go through this, play, uh, this phase feel free to go ahead it's not too difficult a process uh, the next thing we're going to need um, is a specific type of memory card uh, for the emulator. Um, now, one of the great things uh, currently and very recently um, is that the process of playing online has been made significantly easier over time and is currently, should be in theory, incredibly simple, so much that it's basically done for you. However, if that part doesn't work, there is a backup which I'll show later on as well. So you need to go ahead over to this thread here, also in the description below, um, with the uh, memory card that has everything unlocked as well as uh, the DNS uh, stuff already in the memory card as well, which should work automatically, although sometimes it doesn't. So I'll touch upon that later on. So you need to go ahead, download the zip file from there, the um, download wherever it is at the bottom of this. There's also a small guide here of how to get this to work, but I will show that off um, in the tutorial. Uh, what we'll also need as well um, is, uh, depending on what you want to do, when you download PCSX2, um, it has in its set of it a, uh, a, a, kind of a set of uh, plugins, which are like little mini programs, you can't control like the graphics, the sound, that sort of thing. Uh, if that is not good enough for you in the respect that some of those plugins are quite old, you will need to get updates for some of them if you want to get more at the emulator. Uh, but the main thing to really note uh, that you'll require for online play is you will need to get hold of this part here, uh, a most up-to-date Dev9 plugin, which basically covers um, internet play. Uh, you will need to get hold of this. I don't know how stable the one that's based on PCX2 is, so go ahead and get hold of it. It's nice and easy. Uh, see you dev 97 uh, z this one right here should do perfectly fine. Download that, get hold of it, and it will be ready to rock and roll. Right, so now we've got hold of everything we require, let's actually set up um, our emulator. As my thing dings at me. So we want to get hold of this. Uh, I don't personally like start many shortcuts, but we want a desktop though, that'd be fine. Uh, now, the destination folder, I tend to find tries to put you in amongst program files, uh, especially x86, but I recommend do not put your files in there because then you need to like authorize every single thing you do and it's just, it's, it's unnecessary and can also cause problems with the emulator itself. So my suggestion would be don't do that. Go ahead, um, put it in somewhere in like your documents, for example. I have a specific place that I would like to put mine in, which is in here. Uh, and then PS2 REOB only, which I've got set up specifically for this. So I'm going to go ahead and install. Which doesn't take too long, thankfully. Very, very nice. Come on. There we go, beautiful. So we'll close that. Right, now we need to go ahead and actually boot it up. So let me just get hold of the window. Uh, emulators uh, in here, Oreo boot only, PS6 2. Okay, so we've got all of all this stuff here. That's one and good. Let's go ahead and boot up the actual application. I tried to quickly make sure everything was up and running, so we'll boot this up here. Here we go. So uh, we'll need to go ahead and boot this up properly. So we want to choose our language. We'll go English US. Uh, apply that if in case you need to change your actual language. Uh, this I tend to get. You may or may not get this. If so, just say import. It's fine. Okay, so next up, you'll get your list of plugins here, um, which are all fine for the moment. We'll play around this later, um, but do note where um, your folder directions are. Um, this can be uh, easy to miss and get misplaced, so do be sure to keep that in mind. Next, we'll get hold of the uh, the BIOS section, which you actually need to run here. So um, we've got the actual Explorer um, file here, which is currently empty. This is where we need to actually have your BIOS file. Now, luckily, I do have mine ready which is going to be sent over here. 
There we go. This is the version we'll be using for this. Uh, I would advise using the latest Japanese version BIOS that you physically can, specifically beyond uh, ver be version 2 of some kind. Uh, there are two different versions you can find of the PS2 BIOSes, version 1s, version 2s, which I believe relate to the, um, the the more chunky versions and the slim lines, which are released later on in production, which only have better software. So you want to try and get hold of those if possible. But uh, this one should be perfectly fine. So we're going to put that there. We shall uh, refresh the list. And there we go. 2006, uh, this one was made. It's about as late as uh, one of the latest versions of the Japanese fast there was ever made. So that's all well and good. Minimize that. Okay, so now we need to actually do a little bit more uh, work here on the on the thing before we get here. So next thing we need to do uh, is go back into the plugins here. Let's do this next. So next thing we want to do is to deal with Dev9, uh, which we need to set up. At the moment, you've only got the base one that is in the emulator. So we need to go ahead and make a change here. So if we go into the plugins folder, which is here. This is all the various stuff here that's applied here. So there's the Dev9 Null version, um, but there is a more quicker variant, uh, which is the tab that we uploaded from uh, from this one, actually, yes, uh, which is CLR Dev9, which is much more up to date. So I will go ahead and get hold of my actual got hold of copy here. Move it on over. I said, hold on a second. Moves over here, so this is all one patch. There we got CLR Dev Nine right there, and then we might need to um, uh, refresh this actually. So let's quickly go out, go back in, plug in. There we go, and there we go. CLR Dev Nine zero point eight point six. That's the most recent version that I have available at time of recording. So we'll go ahead and put that in and apply it. Very very good. Um, now, the next part you may not need to do, but I would suggest you certainly do ahead and do that. You want to go into configure and uh, go into enable Ethernet. Uh, make sure this is ticked. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to play online if you don't want to do this. Um, and you shouldn't have to do this part, but just in case to make sure. Also, hopefully you guys can see this. No, you can't. There we go. This is what the tab looks like. Uh, go into options here. And what you want to do just to make sure everything works fine is untick this uh, oh, what am I looking for? No, DNS1 IP, that's the one. Uh, untick this one. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to put in the actual IP address of the actual uh, the actual servers at the moment and put it in manually. Sometimes it decides it doesn't want to work correctly for reasons beyond my understanding. So as of October 2019, the IP address that you'll need is 173. Dot one nine eight dot two zero seven dot nine nine. This has changed a couple of times over the course of the um, the online server's existence. So if you have never done this before, do go and check up what it's worked. This should be fine for now and hopefully fine for another few years or so. But if you're several years down the line, this could be different. It happened the first time I set this up and I couldn't figure out what the problem was for about a day. Believe me, I was annoyed when I realized. So I'm going to go ahead and imply that. Worry about the HDD stuff. This is all relating to if you were to set up an actual uh, hard drive to install the game on as such. We'll touch upon that later. Anyways, we're all good here. You've got your various graphic settings as well. I suppose I'll quickly set this up here. Uh, we'll have uh, 3D11. Uh, we shall in turn the internal resolution up a little bit because I've got a half-decent PC. <laughs> um, and that should be fine. Okay. And okay. Good. A couple of things we want to change as well while we're in here. Uh, we also want to go into memory cards. This is the next thing we do. Remember that memory card we downloaded? We will need to go ahead and uh, actually insert it into the console. This looks quite complicated. It's not actually all that bad. So first of all, note where your memory card's uh, file is, which should be in the same place as this, uh, though sometimes it isn't. Uh, documents PS. Ah, oh, yes. Sometimes you get in documents. Uh, PCSX2 decides it's going to set up uh, its own uh, folder. Uh, even if you set it out there, like here, for example, it does this sometimes. So memory cards. So these are two blank uh, eight megabyte memory cards. Now what we want to go ahead and do is get hold of the memory card that we downloaded. Uh, and what you'll get is this here. Uh, Outbreak Mem Card Pack uh, 0101 2018. Uh, it has a variety of versions of the memory card depending on what version you're playing as for reasons. Uh, what we need to get hold of is Japan. We want uh, V1 2000, 2004 here. And you want to get hold of this specific card here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to copy that over. 
and we're going to paste that over to this list here so it's in the same place. All right, get rid of that. Shouldn't uh, shouldn't need that anymore. Now we want to go back onto here. We want to refresh our list, and now you'll find the memory card is now here. So what we need to do is we now need to put it in the console, which the best way to do that is to take this memory card here, eject it, and then take the memory card we do want and insert. Uh, yes. And there you go. So that is now inserted and that should be ready to rock and roll. It's already formatted. It should be totally good to go. I will apply that. Uh, anything else you want to do change in here, which I would suggest you might want to do, is uh, you can go through your um, actual settings as well. Uh, we'll go into window settings very briefly. There's a lot of settings here for technical stuff and disabling frame limiting and that sort of thing here, which is all well and good. But the main thing we're interested in uh, is going to be the window settings. Uh, I personally prefer having the game as full free. You can set your own custom window size as well, which I will, uh, for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, leave it 640 by 480. But this is where you can keep it as a window and you can make it whatever size you like. And I would certainly suggest make the game bigger. It's, it's probably a good idea. Right then, uh, so that is pretty much everything uh, as far as configuration is concerned. The only one other thing you might want to set up, um, it depends on how you wish to play the game. Um, now, currently, if you were to just run it straight away now, you'd have to use your keyboard, um, which, personally, I don't like doing. Uh, I much prefer playing this game with a, like an actual PS2 controller, which I have a uh, an adapter for, which is USB. It goes into the cons into the PC even. Uh, really cheap, um, pretty easy to pick up, and they're actually pretty reliable as well. So if you want to go ahead and set that up, I'll quickly show us up as well. Go to controllers, um, plug in settings. Uh, so this is all well and good here. Go to pad one. And what you should have is plug in, have your controller already plugged in, ready to go. Uh, you want to, if you're running a DualShock controller, which should be really for PS2, uh, make sure the analog is turned on. And then you just want to go in, so let's say D-pad up, and then press up on the D-pad. And you should find here, I've got it here, a DX Twin USB Joy uh, hat switch up. Make sure your analog is on. Otherwise, it will get confused as to what's the analog stick and what's the D-pad. And also, like I did there, make sure that you have your controller plugged in before you boot up the emulator, because it doesn't tend to like changing things um, on the fly. So we're just going to go ahead and do all the controls here, which doesn't take too long. Square, cross, triangle. Did that go in? No. Nope. Circle. Uh, so all the X input pad stuff, I believe, is basically... Um, it's either like a, a, a example, or uh, maybe it's like actual... Um, like uh, keyboards working. So L1, L2, L3, which is your stick. R1, R2, R3. Uh, and then the left analog stick, uh, you'll need to make sure they're up and down as well. You can change the sensitivities you can see here of your analog stick. So if you're running with an, quite an old controller, um, which perhaps the stick um, doesn't work too well and it's quite sensitive one way or the other. You can change back as well as the dead zone, uh, which is really, really useful, especially for some older controllers. They're quite well worn. The sticks can be a bit on the dodgy side. So we'll apply those. That's all well and good. Okay. And now at this point, we should be ready to at least make sure that uh, the ISO is working correctly and everything's up to at least run the game. This is the first bit we're going to work out. So we're going to go ahead to system. Um, the ISO selector currently should be empty, which it is. So we're going to go to system. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go for a fast boot up, um, not a full one. Full for sometimes doesn't always seem to want to work. So we're going to just go for a, a fast boot up here. And then what we're going to need to do is go ahead and actually use them, um, select the ISO we're going to be using. So mine are in wherever they are. Uh, in here, PS2, games. So I've got one here for Outbreak as well as Outbreak File 2. We'll just uh, run the regular Outbreak for this, for the purposes of this. Which has made my window come up elsewhere. So here's the actual window, as you guys should see. There we go, there's a good sign. Uh, all loading the data, here we go, this looks beautiful. Uh, bear in mind, even if you're playing the Japanese version, some bits will still be in Japanese. Um, only some bits, like um, some cutscenes will have like uh, like um, some Japanese subtitles maybe, or area tra room transitions have some Japanese. It's fine, it's fine. Most of the game is in English. Also bear in mind as well, this seems to be really, really loud when you first open up a PCSX2. Which it was for me, although I'd actually forgotten to... Uh, hold on a sec. Uh, let's go to headphones. 
There you go. You guys should be able to hear this now. I'm also going to turn down the volume because holy damn, this is loud. <laughs> As it always is. Good. But the important thing is, it seems to be working up and well and good. We'll just quickly boot a, uh, a single play game. Make sure it's all running nice and fine. Yeah, there'll be some system data. Great. So let's just quickly go Outbreak. Play as Kevin. Who's the best? He's the man. If you don't think he's the man, then, um, well, we have problems. <laughs> so yeah, cutscene's working. That's great. That one's working as well. Very good. And just quickly, just quickly run into it. Make sure everything's up and running. Which there's no reason it should be at this point, but you know, there's technology. Things definitely happen. And there we go. Beautiful. Everything looks great here. I would suggest if you're um, if you're not used, to, because the game is Japanese, it's running on Japanese controls. So if you want to go to control settings, put it to Type C. Basically, just switches circle and X around, so it's much more similar to uh, it's a US controls rather than UK, which really can help because it constantly throws me out all the damn time. So there we go, the emulator is up and running, beautiful. So next up, we need to actually get this ready for online play. So let's go ahead and close this down, close it down entirely. So yeah, so now we want to go ahead and actually put in the, uh, to get the net play started, which is what we want to go ahead and do. We've already done the Dev9 plugin, make sure the IP is correct, so that's good. So let's reboot the emulator. Uh, again, just to make sure, I probably didn't need to do this, but I, I like doing it just to make sure everything is, so again, make sure everything's good. Uh, specifically, Dev9, make sure it's nice and up to date. So let's go to fast boot again. All right, then. So, this process may or may not work as you intend. Now, the idea is, is that the memory card that we downloaded already has um, a uh, effectively a connection for you to boot up and load into, and it should work perfectly fine. But sometimes it doesn't. If not, then we'll have to set this part up manually, but it's not too bad. So, let's go into network play. Uh, we want to go next. This should work the same if you're playing as file 1 or file 2. Just to let you go. I usually do as var file 2, I'll be honest. So bit, we're doing it file 1. But th this, this process should be identical. So we want to go ahead over to net connection here. Now, hopefully, when you do this, let me click next here. Ah, it hasn't done it, has it? Nope, it has not. Uh, you Sometimes you'll find is it will come up with like a blank. If so, you can press F9 on your keyboard, and this will basically turn your emulator from running hardware mode to software mode on the fly, which usually lets you see stuff here. So what we would hope to have is an automatic connection down here. For some reason, whenever I set this up, I can never seem to get this appear. This is unfortunate, but it's fine. So we'll just set this up manually, um, which means you need to follow the following instructions identically. Otherwise, there could be problems. So we're going to go into network, Nexus, network, uh, network connection, even, or configuration, and boot this up here. So this can be pretty intimidating at first, because you're going to see this, and you're going to wonder... What the hell is this? And yeah, this is all in Japanese, so you need to do what I do here identically. So, from this opening menu, you will do the following. Make sure you're on the uh, the top option here, and press the circle button, because it's Japanese, that's confirmation. So, top option, circle. Okay, uh, then press circle again. Now, um, what I tend to find if you're running this uh, memory card and it doesn't load is this box will come up. I believe this is basically telling you that it, there's already a net file that it sees and do you want to overwrite? The answer to this is yes, because for some reason it hasn't worked. So make sure to go left and circle and then left and circle again. And then we're good. All right. All happy. Beautiful. So we'll press OK there. So at this point... Press right. Oh, no, hold on. No, 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 not that. Okay, so uh, at this point, yeah, so there's nothing you can do here at this point. So uh, there's nothing you move. So it's just basic confirmation. So press circle. It will take you to a variety of gray screens. So this order, everyone, you want to press right to move over to the network adapter. Press circle, then right. 
Press circle on this blue box, which is just a confirmation dialogue. Pick the bottom option of the two and circle. And then go right all the way that you physically can. Skip everything you can here until you get to this bit here uh, with the network adapter. And this little pop-up box should appear here. So, uh, at this point, everything should be reasonably good. So, press circle. And let this boot up here. This is now doing some netplay stuff. Okay. So, circle again. Uh, then, on this pop-up box, make sure you choose the right option here of the two. And uh, press circle. Circle again. And at this point... Everything should be good. You now need to close your emulator. And totally restart the whole emulator just to be safe. Probably don't need to restart the whole emulator. And then reboot the game again. So I'll have the network play again. Next. Yep, load the net file again. And then back to uh, once again. We want to click on when it boots up here. Eventually. Net connection. Next. And fingers crossed. Uh, if I press F9. There we go. All right. We have ourselves an Ethernet connection. That's a good start. So now we want to press OK. And we want to load this. We should start this part here. Um, loading up the actual connection to the biohazard servers. Now at this point... Um, if you have, if you can't seem to connect to the I, this is where I always choose, um, and I connect the IP manually in the Dev9 plugin, because at this point, right here, it, I always find it hangs up, because I, I, I don't know what it's looking for, but I'll put it in manually, so what it should do is boot up this screen here, this is a very, very good screen to see, so we're actually going to go ahead and even make this a little bit bigger. There we go here. This is this is beautiful. This is very beautiful. So, uh, this is where you would log in with the same ID and password that you have for OBSRV. Uh, this is why you set this up here. However, if you recently logged into that site, the, it's actually clever enough that you can auto-log in through the chat, which is really awesome. So, we'll go ahead and log in via that way. Yep, enter the lobbies. Poor civilians. 21 years ago, folks. 21 years ago. Move this up here so you can see a little bit better. So this is now loading. And at this point, this looks pretty good. I'm pretty sure everything's up and running fine. But again, we'll just make sure things should be working correctly at this point. So uh, we have our ID here, um, which I already have. You may need to put this in, potentially, this uh, ID here. Um, it's been a while since I've done this process. But you can create a new one. It's not too difficult. So this will be your ID that we have recognized our, our handle. Press OK. More loading. Remember that this is based on a system that was originally set up almost 20 years ago. So it's very menu heavy. So uh, the way Outbreak File 1 and 2 work is totally different. So if you're playing File 1 games, you must run West Town. East Town does not work. Do not select it. You'll need to reboot your emulator, basically. Go into West Town, free mode. All right. So, at this point, what you want to do is, if you want to change things, we'll press F9 just to go back to um, hardware mode so the game runs a bit more properly. Uh, room list, uh, which is a variety of various areas. They're all usable. Uh, so, we're going to say Area 1, for example. Uh, we shall... Oh, there's actually a game being set up in room one. That's pretty cool. So head on to whatever room. I wouldn't choose room three here, though. Uh, let's go to room two. We're going to set up a very quick game just to make sure online play is actually working. So it doesn't really matter what we choose here. Outbreak. Very hard, Kevin. This is fine. So basically just finish. And then we're just going to start the game immediately. And this game is not being held locally on your computer. This is actually being done live on the servers. Even though it's only just me... Um, it should be noted. So, if anyone else was in the, uh, the game, they would also be able to connect as well. There's the menu. There's the, uh, the setup. And then with any luck, we should find as well, eventually, here's the game. 
And we know it's just us because there are no AIs in this game either. So we know it is just us in the game. Awesome, everyone. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You now have online play for Resident Evil Outbreak. If you're curious as to what the PS, uh, the File 2 even uh, menus looks like, then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll actually quickly load that up as well. So we'll need to obviously uh, go to our ISO selector. We need to select File 2 now. Yep, we shall uh, swap the disk. And then reboot fast once again. Go through this. Ah, the RPD. The bastion of justice that it is. Still one of my favourite Resident Evil places, like, ever. I love that place. So this all looks really good. Yeah, that's the uh, out file 2 opening there. Very good. This should this game should run fine. There's no issues with that. So again, we'll go into network play. So I can show you guys how this runs a little bit different. Also, it should be noted, now that we have an established network that works, uh, what you can fortunately do is just go into previous connection and this will use the last one you used. So you don't have to go in through that sort of setup menu. It just cuts down some of the time. So this will go ahead and initialize the connection once again. It amazes me that a game that's over 20 years old, you know, that had an internet and any capabilities that was way before its time is still available nowadays. It's, it's quite fascinating, if you ask me. I think it's fantastic. So at this point, this all looks exactly the same with the menu, which it should do. This point is stock for whichever version you're playing. So again, we'll log in. A lot of loading, unfortunately. That is the nature of it. And now we have a rather unfortunate turn of events. Operation Bachelors has just wiped out 100,000 people in Raccoon City. It was bad. The end. <laughs> Sorry. This is a tutorial, not a, not a humor video. It's my uh, Let's Play series coming out there. All right, then. So uh, at this point, we need to put up whatever ID is. You notice this might look slightly different to file one, and that's because at this point, it's totally different. So uh, this is what file two looks like. Totally different to file one, which is really awesome. They've got like this sort of like semi-ish like kind of map of Raccoon City, which is used for the um, for things here, which is pretty sweet that this is a actual thing that exists. So pretty cool. Most of your games will be spent in the free area, which you would set up um, by clicking the free area. Click on the door here. And then you would then set up the rooms as you did previously uh, in the same fashion. You can set up passwords, room names. You can change the lump players, that sort of thing. Um, and here's all the scenarios as well, as well as all the characters in the game. However, there are also other rooms here which allow you to play the game with certain modifiers. So like the Nightmare modifier, which makes the game significantly harder. Uh, survival, which turns on friendly fire, um, which means you can hurt your allies, which can be quite entertaining. Panic, which is both of those, as well as some of its pieces here, which sometimes work, sometimes don't. But most of your games will be kept within the free area. So that is online play for Resident Evil Outbreak uh, set up for you. Hopefully this works correctly. Um, if not, then do persist a bit because technology is pretty dodgy. But this is like the third time now I've done this on this setup and it's worked every time without a hitch. So I'm pretty confident that that will work fine. Now, the one last thing I said I would do at the end of this video, if you're interested, is how to set up um, an actual hard drive install of this game in order to make your room transitions in the game generally just run a lot faster and smoother. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to need to close the emulator once again, and we'll just close this entirely. So this is where you require the last thing that you require, which is, again, another thread that is found below. Uh, this is for the uh, HDL or OPL, as well as the um, official HD installations of the emulator. Um, what this relates to is back when you had uh, this game and a couple other games, this was like the uh, real 
real early days of like consoles nowadays where you pick up a game and you install it in order to play it. Back on like say like the 360 for example it was an optional thing you could do um, in order to make your games run faster and this is a very similar thing as well. Um, it is very very effective and the fact that it makes your load time significantly faster even on online play is quite remarkable that that works. I don't quite know how it does but it does. So what you'll need um, is, as I say, everything we've got so far, uh, the Winsop Dev9 plug, which we already have, and then we'll need to get hold of this, the HD loader and opl.elf files, which is over here on a media file. So we'll go ahead and download that, or whatever the equivalent might be for your um, the time that you've used in this video. So hdlops.7z. We need to go ahead and unpack that, and then that will go ahead and give us these two files here, hdloader.elf and openps2loader.elf. Uh, again, this is totally optional, but I would definitely advise doing this, and it's a fairly simple way of, of making this all work as well. So I we'll should close that too. So first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to boot up a HD loader. Not like that, though. And that will give you these files here, hdloader.elf and openps2loader.elf. Um, these are the two files that we require. So what we need to do is we need to first reboot our emulator, which I need to do via this way because, unfortunately, I've made a slight error. There we go. So at this point, we need to go into system and then run elf. And then we need to go to wherever this file is, which is uh, in my uh, downloads. So so uh, over here, I'll make sure to put make sure to put those with your uh, actual files, but we'll leave them here for the time being. It's okay. So we'll HD loader, which is this over here. Ah, right, yes, of course. Sorry, I'm being silly here. Which will give you these two files here, hdloader.elf and openps2loader.elf. We'll be needing both of these. So, if you want to do this, the first thing you'll need to go ahead and do is actually head into your configs. Um, you need to go into your plugins and find your dev9 plugin again, where we played around with the IP settings. And what we want to do here, uh, where's it gone? Oh, it's gone over here. Sorry about that. It's decided to boot on a different monitor. So uh, what we need to do is click on Enable HDD. And then you want to go into the options. And in the options, what, you can, what you'll get is this box will turn up here. Uh, which is your raw path. And then you'll have a size that you'll require for the, your actual hard drive. Now, I would recommend... Um, I forget the exact size of these two games. It's obviously dependent somewhat on your uh, the size of your computer and what you're storing this on. But um, I think 20 is more than enough. I forget if 10 is enough. I haven't done this process in a little while. So we'll just click 20 and we'll just call that a day. So we'll click apply. And then that brings up this bar here. So this is it just creating the HDD. This may or may not take some time, depending on how fast your PC is. I'm running with a solid state drive. It makes it a lot quicker. Bear in mind that this is effectively sectioning off 20 gigs of whatever hard drive that you've set this to and the actual raw path, which you can set to wherever you want. And it is literally segmenting that off. This 20 gigs is unusable with the rest of the PC, regardless of what you do with this. So please bear in mind, don't set it too big unless you send and install a load of games here. But you can install a variety of things via this, which is all well and good. So there we go. So that is apply. Very, very good. Okay, now we need to go to running your left and then HD loader, which is this over here. Uh, okay, hard drive connected, PS2 needs to be formatted before it can be used for HD loader, which we will need to go ahead and do. So we shall click uh, continue. There we go. Okay then, so HD size and the free. Okay then, so now we need to go ahead and install the actual game. You can do this for both files. So we'll go to install. 
and then we'll need to insert the CD or DVD disc of the game you wish to install. So this is going back to your emulator. So you need to go to the ISO selector, select which one it is. So we'll go for, um, we'll do a file one first. So we'll just swap the disc. So this now registers as file one is in the quote disc tray, unquote. So we'll now press continue. Uh, choose for a name for the game. So we'll just call it Outbreak. Uh, outbreak, uh, wherever my B is. Unfortunately, my ability of spelling is getting the worse and worse the longer this video goes on. So we'll just call it Outbreak. There we go. And this will now begin the installation process for the size of the disk, which is, um, oh, it's about 4 gigs. Actually, I think about a 10 gig drive is probably enough for this, but never mind. Now, at this point, this process will take some time, um, depending, again, a little bit on the speed of your PC, but... The thing is, is with HD Loader, is this is effectively running on a software that is like 15 years old. And as such, this does not use anywhere near the capability of your PC. So, if you click the, and I forget which one it is, I believe it's the tab key. There we go. See how the speed there's gone up? Um, so I've taken off the limiter of the game. So this is now running at twice the speed the PS2 normally would do. If you were to go into config, uh, I believe it's in here actually, video GS, core GS, you can actually adjust the turbo as well. So you can make it even faster. So let's say if I want to call it, say, I don't know, uh, 400% and apply it. And I might need to, uh, I don't know if it will run now. So turn that down. There we go. So this is now running at four times the speed that it normally would do. And this will install the game four times as fast. Um, as you can see here, it's already rocketed up and makes life significantly easier. Um, so just makes it install and make actually more use of your PC. I could probably set it far higher than that, but this should be more than capable. So we just got to sit around and wait until the installation process is done. There we go. And the installation process basically just coming to a finish now. Uh, you would do file 2 in exactly the same manner. Uh, I believe file 2 is, is slightly larger um, a disk than is uh, file 1. Um, so that should be noted out here. But as you can see, just coming towards an end. Very good. We'll just turn the limiter off here. Uh, I'll turn it back on, I should say, so it's back to running normal speed. There you go. Installation is complete. Fantastic. So, yeah, so you do the same thing for file 1. That would also work as well. Cool. Right, so we're just going to test to make sure this works here. So we're going to close this down. And now what we're going to go do is run ELF again. And then open PS2 loader. Which will bring up this menu over here. Here we go, open PS2. And that should boot uh, this list up here of a variety of games. Um, now this is where everything will be go ahead and stored. This is all well and good. Everything should be here. First file 1 and file 2 we need down to install it. So what you need to do is press the start button here. Um, just make sure your settings are fine. This needs to be on auto um, in order to make that list appear. And just make sure something like Remember Last Play game isn't off on or something. Because then it will just load that game again. It should all be pretty fine by the looks of it. If I could ever press the correct button. And then press circle to move across the menu. And we should be able to just run the game. There you go. It's now loading there. Okay, this is a good sign. If, the, if this doesn't work, it should just kick you out straight away at this point here. And it should just totally die. And it would just say, what are you doing? It might even just completely crash. But the fact that this is looting in any context is a good, good sign. So let's quickly boot the game again. And one more time, just to make sure everything's up and running. And also to show you the difference uh, compared to the, if this is working or not. Let's go to, say, the Hive quickly. Again, we'll just run with Kevin. Lovely. Let's get through that. And what you should find is that, yeah, you see how that load sequence for starters? That was pretty damn quick. The other way of testing it is to head on over towards the door here. Ah, oh, the lovely Dr. Hirsch. I apologize if I surprised you. Please do not be alarmed. I'm a doctor in this hospital. I must say that this hospital is not an ideal place to take shelter. It's not as safe as it may look or sound. I myself have been to get out of here as soon as possible. I'd listen to the good doctor. And what you should find is as we go ahead and leave the door here, usually this process takes about like five, six, seven heartbeats. Now it's just free. 
This probably about halves your loading time between areas, which normally that would take about seven, yeah, about five, six, seven, sometimes even longer uh, amount of heartbeats of loading, depending on the size of the room and complexity of what's going on. But you can see, nice and quick, nice and snappy, and you are ready to rock and roll with your hard drive installed Resident Evil Outbreak online. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Hope it's been of use to you. Thank you all very, very much for watching. Uh, if you're interested in further information on this, as well as our Let's Play series on both this game and many others on the Resident Evil series, you can be sure to subscribe to my channel, um, as well as throw a like if it worked for you. Uh, if you do have problems, uh, do let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to try and assist you. But again, if you're just asking, oh, where's the ISO? Can I have the BIOS for this? I, I will just delete your comment, and that's all I would do, because I can't answer that question. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you soon.